into a little secret. My favourite part is when I switch on the Christmas tree lights for the very first time. And one thing I always do at Christmas is read the story of the first Christmas. Do you want to join me? Okay, get cosy and let's begin. The very first Christmas begins with a young woman called Mary receiving some rather surprising news. Greetings, Mary. Ah, who are you? Don't be afraid. God has sent me. He's really pleased with you and he's chosen you to give birth to his son. Let it be as you have said. Then the angel left, followed by a swarm of busy bees. Busy bees? not right. How's that got in here? <laughs> That's uh, extraordinary. Right, where were we? Mary was engaged to get married to a man called Joseph. He was a good man and decided that he would quietly end the engagement because he'd found out that Mary was pregnant. God had other plans. Mary, I can't marry you. I'm sorry. Greetings, Joseph. Ah, you scared me. Who are you? Don't be afraid. You need to still make Mary your wife. The child she is carrying is the Son of God. You will name him Jesus and he is going to save people from their sins. The angel left followed by a flock of chirpy chicks. What? What? <laughs> chirpy chicks? Not right. <laughs> How strange. How extraordinary. Let me just change that. Joseph did as the angel had told him. He gathered Mary, who was now heavily pregnant, and they set off to Bethlehem, where they needed to go to register for the census. They travelled on Joseph's trusty bike. Hi. Wait a minute, this is getting ridiculous. Joseph's donkey, not bike. <laughs> Bethlehem and began to search for somewhere to sleep. Have you got any room here? Yeah. Ah. Have you got any room here? Ah. Jesus and wrapped him in cloths, then laid him in a manger. While all this was happening, some shepherds were looking after their sheep in a field nearby. Yeah. 
afraid. This is becoming a habit now. I bring you good news that will bring joy to all people. Go on then, tell the good news. Yes, tell the good news. Today in Bethlehem, a saviour has been born. He is the Messiah, the Lord. You will find him in a stable, wrapped in clothes and lying in a manger. The shepherds were amazed and excited. Let's go to Bethlehem and see the thing that has happened. The shepherds gathered their sheep and headed to Bethlehem to find the stable covered in solar panels. Huh? Solar panels! I know, I know. The shepherds gathered their sheep and headed to Bethlehem to find the stable the angel had told them about. Wise men from the east had been following a star which led them to the stable in Bethlehem. They had followed the star so that they could come and worship the Messiah. They brought gifts for Jesus. I see gold. I bring you for the truth. I bring you potatoes. Potatoes! <laughs> Try that again. Mary and Joseph received the gifts and guests with hearts full of joy, while the saviour of the world, God's own son, slept peacefully in the manger. <laughs> what an extraordinary first Christmas. Right, so let's get these angel wings on here. Right, you're ready to fly. Go for it, angel. Right, and you, Miss Mary, let's keep that headdress on. Right, go have a baby. <laughs> what a brilliant reminder of that extraordinary first Christmas and the gift the world received when Jesus, the Son of God, came to earth as a baby. But did you notice all the problems with that story? Did you think it was chubby chicks, uh, bike instead of donkeys, solar panels, wise men bringing potatoes as their gift? That would certainly be extraordinary if that were the case. But all of the things that were mentioned are in fact extraordinary in their own way. They are examples of the transformational work we do together with our partners as the All We Can movement in some of the world's poorest communities. From bikes which enable young girls to get to school and pursue their dreams, to busy bees which provide an income for families and an alternative for farmers struggling to make an income. These are extraordinary things. This Christmas, join with us and buy an extraordinary gift to support the work of All We Can in these communities. You can do that right now, even with all the restrictions we're living under, by visiting allwecan.org.uk forward slash shop. Or get in touch with us to order your copy of the Extraordinary Gifts catalog. It's been an unprecedented and extraordinary year for all of us. So let's make it an extraordinary Christmas too. One full of the hope and promise of Jesus, and extraordinary life-changing gifts for everyone. Happy Christmas. Good morning, church. Join us online for this Sunday morning service. Why not use our new chat function to let us know who you are and where you're watching from? 
we also have a prayer request function and have a team stood by ready to pray for you. We hope you have an amazing Sunday and I pray that this service blesses you. We want everything to look nice. The decorations of the season, our homes with their lights and tinsel, wreaths and ribbons. We want to lighten the darkness around us, bring beauty to the ugliness that wears us down. We decorate because it is our tradition, because it lifts our hearts, because it makes us feel like children again. We deck our halls because company is coming. The prophet Isaiah smiled when he said, God will give a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, a mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. No matter how far we feel from the spirit of the season, God promises to decorate us with love and with joy. And so we light this third candle as a sign of our joy in the beautiful things of this season. Not just the things that glitter and flash, but the deeper things, the beauty of the heart and the soul, the beauty of love shared in service and hospitality. Good morning, everybody. My name is Margaret Doughty, and I'm a minister in the Lincoln Methodist Circuit. Today is the third Sunday in Advent and I welcome you to our worship this morning and we shall start by singing our first song and it is speak O Lord as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word take your truth plant it deep in us shape and fashion us 
in your likeness. And I shall now light the three candles for the third week in Advent. And so let us pray. It is beyond our power, Father, to put into words the wonder of your coming and all that it revealed and continues to reveal. We praise you for the light that came into the world at the birth of your son. And because that light is still shining and showing your glory to us. Accept, we pray, the adoration which comes from hearts that are full of wonder. A wonder that words cannot easily express. Thank you, gracious Lord. Amen. And now our prayer of confession. Lord Jesus, as the anniversary of your birth draws near, we confess that we are often too busy with our festivities to give time to thinking about what it all means. Too often our thoughts are shallow and unworthy. 
In so many ways, we make Christmas less than it might be by not giving enough thought to the real meaning of your coming. Forgive us and help us, we pray, for your name's sake. Amen. Be assured that when we confess our sins in the name of Jesus, we are forgiven, and so we can truly give thanks to God. Amen. We turn now to our Bible reading, and it is from St John's Gospel, chapter 1, verses 19 to 28, reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. It is a pivotal point, not only for the people, including John the Baptist, gathered around the River Jordan, but also for us in our time, as Jesus emerges onto the scene, a fully grown man ready to begin the task for which he came. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed, and he did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. And then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had, that had been sent for him from the Pharisees, they asked him, Why then are you baptising if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptise with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. We shall now sing a song of praise and thanksgiving. Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Changing. Your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. growing deep inside of me every time i see you all your goodness shines through i can feel this god song rising up in me Testament foretold the coming of a day when God would step into this world of darkness to bring light and hope. As Isaiah declared, a child would be born, a son given. But the announcement that the time was at hand was met with mixed reactions. When Zechariah was undertaking one of us his very occasional turns at the temple in Jerusalem, he was chosen by lot to enter the special place and carry out the priestly duties. He was amazed by the sight of an angel who proceeded to tell him that he would become a father. 
and that his wife would bear a son to him. Now I am sure that for many years he and his wife Elizabeth would have prayed for just such a happening. But as time went on and old age began to overtake them, they would no doubt have given up that particular prayer. But now here stands an angel telling him that their prayers have been answered. So it was that Zachariah's response was of hesitation and doubt. It can't be, we're too old. Well, in human terms and in human understanding, they probably were, but he had failed to take God into the account. How often do we hesitate to believe for the same reason? We can weigh things up as to what is accepted normal in any given situation, but how marvellous that our God is not restricted to the normal or bound by what we perceive as natural. Because in many instances, God has proved to be what he is, a God of surprises. And the sooner we recognise this fact, the more quickly our lives will be transformed. And I, for one, find this very exciting. Zacharias was not only to learn that God is full of surprises, but also a God of shocks as well. It must have been quite a traumatic experience for Zachariah as he became dumb. And what his wife Elizabeth made of it, goodness only knows. And the neighbours, well, what must have they have thought? Presumably that he had had some sort of seizure. And so the waiting begins. We often have to wait for things to happen, don't we? And we're not always good at it. I've been waiting for a revival, and it sometimes seems to me that God has left us high and dry. But I know that this is not true, because there are moments when God seems so close, and I feel enveloped totally in his love, that there can be no doubt that he is there, waiting. And I wonder, I wonder, could it be that he is waiting for something from us? Some sort of indication of our readiness in order to fulfil his plan, whatever that might be. God had made a plan involving John, and when the time was right, he began his ministry by calling people to change their ways and repent. He was obviously an intriguing and interesting character and was questioned by many, especially the priests and the Levites. I picture him as larger than life, with a strong and commanding presence. They, they wanted to pin him down, to reveal just who he is. And so the questions go on. Are you a prophet? Are you Elijah? Who are you? They just could not understand what he represented. And the fact that he was baptising people really puzzled them. John had certainly got them interested, if nothing else. You know, that might be one of our failings. Are we intriguing enough and exciting enough to make people want to know who we are, what we represent? Can we give an account of ourselves? Can you give an account of yourself? Why you go to church, pray, study the Bible, if you do? John certainly could at this point in his life as his ministry began to have impact. You see, he must have known that he was special because I'm sure his father and mother would have told him about what happened. Why would they keep it a secret? Because as far as we know, they were not instructed to do so, only to name him John. And as I pondered on this, the thought came into my mind that John, announced by an angel, was a special child. And I wrote a reflection on that theme. Listen. A special child. Those who met John the Baptist were very lucky. John was a gift from God. Zechariah and Elizabeth had really given up. And then a wonderful thing happened. 
a child was on its way. This was good news indeed. John was special, a late arrival, but very welcome. John was special. He took to his task and accepted his role. John was special. A man of the outdoors, he feared no one. John was special. He told it as it was. Repent, do better. John was special. Not me, he said, but another. John was very special. He prepared the way, the warm-up man, before the drum roll that announced the main act. As we go through chapter one of John's Gospel, from verse 19 on, the event of Jesus' baptism has already taken place, and John is recounting what has happened. This is the testimony given by John, it says. John is looking back. He recalls his own unworthiness. He is still baptizing and Jesus comes along and John openly declares Jesus as the special one that they have all been waiting for. Again, words came into my mind as I pondered on John's words. I am not worthy. And so, a reflection. Confident, bold, unflinching in his task, John. Larger than life, emulating the prophets of long ago, John. And yet he knew, as the people questioned within their hearts, he knew that he was not the longed for, awaited one. Are you the Messiah? That was the question. No, the answer came, because he did know, perhaps had always known, that another waited in the wings. What is more, he was humble enough to proclaim it, and in so doing, prove that he was indeed worthy. John fulfilled his task, and although he continued urging the people to repent of sin, Jesus now begins to take centre stage. The babe in the manger has become the hope of the future, the loving friend to all who will receive him. He is our hope. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now we are going to sing another song. Jesus, Jesus, holy and anointed one, risen and exalted one. Your name is like honey on my lips. Your spirit like water to my soul. Your word is a lamp unto my feet. Jesus, I love you. I love you.
We now come to our prayers of intercession and I invite you to bow your heads in prayer and join in the response after the words, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming into the world. Help us to see an end to the onslaught that the virus has brought upon all corners of the world. Help those who are in despair to find hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, prepare us for your coming into our own immediate communities. Help us to show respect for one another and be good neighbours. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, Prepare us for your coming to those who are facing difficulties of body, mind and spirit. Help us to show compassion and love to everyone we be. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all who are sharing in this time of worship. If there is anyone in trouble or need, help them to know that they can ask for prayer or talk to someone at the end of our service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we look to celebrating your birth at Bethlehem, may each one of us know your peace and your love in our lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. Now I, I invite you to join in the Lord's Prayer, the traditional version, with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
Now we come to our closing hymn, and it's a traditional Advent hymn. Come, thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free. From our fears and sins release us, let us find our rest in thee. with our blessing. Go now, enjoy the goodness of God, assured of his love for you, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.